Uh, good morning, Ted. Good morning, sir. Are we, uh, ready to refresh the iPads? Again? Oh my god, is it that time of the year? Well, actually, we haven't refreshed any iPad in over, uh, 500 days, sir, so I think it's time that we update something. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I just didn't sleep well last night. Um, why don't we just, uh... Make a make a bigger air. Okay, using which exact display specifications, uh, sir? I, I don't know. We just put put whatever we put in the old pros in the in the air. We sell it for cheaper. Ah, uh, sir, but we no longer manufacture those older iPad pros. The only twelve point nine inch size we manufacture currently is mini so LED. Wow. Oh my gosh, you're so loud. Okay, then just we put the mini LED in the air then. But sir. Liquid Retina XDR, isn't that supposed to be somewhat of a uh, pro feature that we don't give to the cheaper iPad Airs? Plus, it has 120 hertz. Oh my gosh, you and your questions. We'll just charge a lot more for it then, okay? And the pros are gonna have OLED, so don't even worry okay, about just, it. I, I thought the goal was to make the 12.9 inch, you know, more affordable, but if we're adding all these pro stop, features to it. Stop, with all of the questions. Just, just do it, just ship it. People will love it. Do we give it a dual camera? Not my problem, Ted. <sighs> okay. Well, I have to admit, this is not how I thought the iPad release cycle was going to go. First off, German felt very confident for a long time claiming that iPads were gonna be a site refresh in March. Obviously, that didn't happen, so my apologies for assuming that we had a final rumor recap video because I didn't expect there to be more rumors. Now people are saying the iPads aren't coming until May. I mean, one of these reports has gotta be somewhat accurate, right? I mean, you could say that, no, they were wrong before, so they'll be wrong again, but seriously, this is the longest amount of time time Apple has ever gone without refreshing any iPad, so unless they plan on, you know, going the way of the iPod, which I don't think they are, they've definitely got to have something cooking behind the scenes for these tablets. And because I expect DubTub to be very, very AI-focused, and also now we've got Vision OS updates to cover along with watchOS, macOS, tvOS, iOS, iPadOS, oh, actually no, iPadOS won't take any time at all, but lots of software announcements to go after, so I guess we're looking at second week of May, hopefully? all the fingers and toes crossed. But Ross Young dropped a new bombshell on us this morning saying that Apple is actually recycling old 12.9 inch iPad Pro displays for the 12.9 inch iPad Air now saying it's gonna be rocking mini LED which was kind of like a wait what? Did not see that coming. I thought it was gonna be LCD because again it's just like the larger size of the existing iPad Air should have the same silicon. There's been no rumors no talk about the larger iPad Air getting a different kind of Type-C port, a different kind of speakers, or even a different camera on the back. It should be very, very similar to the 2018 iPad Pro, but now, of course, they're just adding in a uh, mini LED while they're at it. In my opinion, mini LED kind of makes the jump from LCD to OLED less noticeable. So I guess if you are looking for a cheaper iPad and you wanted the bigger screen, but you also wanted good dynamic range, this might be a good sweet spot for a lot of people simply because the OLED iPad Pros are rumored to get a pretty noticeable price hike. And I think that will apply to both sizes as well, because this year iPad Pros are supposed to both be getting the OLED displays, not just the larger size. And again, they'll be very, very thin, probably require a new keyboard case connection, whereas the 12.9 inch iPad Air will probably be cross compatible with existing iPad Pro accessories, which have been out for a while now. All of the Magic keyboard cases should fit, and because there's only one camera on the back, the cutout for the keyboard cases should be just fine. But now the big question that we're not getting a lot of clarity on is, will this be the first official moment that Apple brings a pro motion display, you know, up to 120 hertz, to a cheaper non-pro device? This would be a big move for Apple, because you know, we've been begging them to bring 120 hertz to the entry-level iPhones for several years. People keep saying, well, the average consumers don't care, which is definitely true, but on the other end of the spectrum, people are saying, well, you know, other Android phones in the $500, $600 price range are able to hit 120 hertz, so the iPhone should too, which is also true and fair. But for the longest time, we've just been saying, well, Apple's looking for reasons to price out the Pro. There's got to be features that the Pro is rocking that care to the masses in some way, shape, or form in order to justify the price gap in the lineup. So if you give promotion to a non-Pro product, you got to come up with some other features, some other perks to opt for the Pro. And I'm guessing now Apple feels comfortable that OLED is now going to be that Pro feature that separates the Pros from the Airs, and maybe they don't feel too bad about missing out on a 
120 hertz, or potentially Apple has found a way to recycle the mini LED displays from the existing iPad Pros, put them on the cheaper iPad Air, and somehow deactivate ProMotion. It may not be as evil as straight up software locking it to 60 hertz. That would kind of suck, but there's also little display controllers they could leave out, for example, just to make the manufacturing simpler and cheaper. But yeah, I've got to admit, after we've had 120 hertz on the iPad for six years now, holy crap, that feels weird. Yeah, it's a bit bizarre that the iPad Air might be getting mini LED, but not quite 120 hertz. That's just going to feel awkward and bizarre on a display of that size, especially running iPad OS. So the good news is the iPad Air sounds a little bit more compelling and a little bit more interesting than I initially thought, you know, before it was kind of the sleeper iPad of, oh yeah, just like how there's a 15 plus and a 15 inch MacBook Air, there's also going to be a slightly bigger iPad Air. Yeah, whatever. But now they're saying, no, that one's getting mini LED. The other new iPad Air, the smaller one, is not getting mini LED, which should increase the price gap between the two. So now keep in mind, currently with the 11 inch and 12.9 inch iPad Pros, we got $300 between those two. So if that price gap remains with the iPad Air, we're talking about $1,000 for a 12.9 inch iPad. So that's kind of the bad news that's setting in that's likely going to be the case because they're bringing mini LED to this larger size iPad. It's probably going to be a bit more pricey than we initially thought, but at the end of the day, it should still technically be a little bit cheaper than the current 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which is rocking an M2 chip and mini LED. So I guess you just take out an ultra wide lens and take out Thunderbolt maybe, and boom, you've now got a 12.9 inch iPad Air. It's really not all that different from what's already on the market. Personally, I don't know what Apple's going to price it at. I think it'll be close to a thousand, but personally, I would still recommend a lot of people just go with an M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That's going to have mini LED. It's still going to be crazy fast. It'll still have Thunderbolts and it's been out for a while. So you can find them on sale for pretty cheap these days. And you don't have to wait around for the second of May, but I guess iPad Airs are known for being a little bit more colorful than the pros. So if you wanted a big colorful iPad, congratulations. This one will probably come in a, I don't know, blue, pink, or yellow, whatever color Tuco so desires. But what do you guys think of mini LED and potentially a ProMotion display coming to the iPad Air? Do you think it's a crazy idea? Do you wish they would have just gone cheaper and kept it LCD? All that stuff, feel free to let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps me out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. This is your Apple Sleep here, and I will see you all in the next one.